Hey, what's up everybody? Coach Jason, welcome back. So the last video I talked about five workouts that can significantly improve the performance of either yours or your athletes for 800 meters. Uh, today I want to talk about five workouts that can really improve your, help you improve your 1500 meters or mile performance, okay? Um, another one of the premier races in running, and uh, but it does require the strength. Uh, a good miler requires the strength of a, you know, a good 3K, 5K runner as well as the speed of a good half mile and a good 400 meter runner. Um, and I actually, I, I use it as a barometer of fitness in a lot of my, in a lot of, with in a lot of my athletes. And I've done this over the last two decades plus as a former competitor and a coach of the last 20 years or so. Um, and I am a USAT, USATF certified coach as well, but I've coached at all uh, high school, college and post collegiate level. And the one mile I found to be is one of the most accurate, uh, gauges of your current fitness. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of work has been done, a lot of studies have been done, even Damon Martin's gone over, who's the one of the uh, most renowned coaches over at Adam State College, and a lot of other coaches as well have done research on the mile, but I've, I found it to be pretty accurate too. And what it, what it does is it can tell you a lot about your current fitness, which is why I encourage a lot of folks to do one mile time trials after, you know, a base period of six to eight weeks of running, because it'll give you a good gauge of what your current fitness is, and what that'll do is it'll tell you how to set up your 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 training paces for runs and workouts and so on so that you can progress from your current fitness to your goal fitness over an ex over a period of time and make sure that you're training in the right tra uh, training zones and pace ranges so that you're not only recovering properly but you're not training way over your head and um, you know which is important okay now you, you if you're a five minute mile and you're you know, you don't want to be training with the 430 folks right now. If you're a six-minute mile, you don't want to be training with the 530 folks right now because the recovery process is going to be different for you and for them, okay? Their needs are going to be different, okay? So training in the right uh, zones is very, very important so they can, can continue to progress and stay healthy, okay? So I have a video down below about one-mile time trial, and I've done everything. I broke it down from eight minutes down to four minutes in 20-second increments and how to set the training paces uh, for everything based on, and for workouts and everything based on what you run for your one mile time trial. So watch those two videos and, and keep in mind too that it tells you a lot. So if you're close, and I'll, just before I start, if you're closer to your 3K and your 5K equivalent to the mile than you are the 800 and the 400, that's a sign that some more improvement in the 800 and 400 is needed or speed development is needed. If you're closer to the shorter events than you are the longer events equivalents, then it's a sign to increase aerobic training threshold, tempo, repeat work, 5K, and so on and so forth. The, the, those are indications of where modifications should be made to your training to continue progressing forward, okay? Um, and having a well-balanced training approach really puts you in a position to uh, not only compete well, but make the best decisions possible. And you'll be ready for any type of scenario if you're doing all types of things. So uh, in your training, if you have multi-tiered, multi-paced training systems, so you'll be able to kick from afar, kick from a short, Grind from the start, and you know this is also where knowing your competition, uh, knowing about your competition as as a coach as well. So with your high school, college, knowing how your how their your competitors race, paying attention to it, knowing how your athletes race, paying attention to it, and see how how can I get my athletes to either get closer to the people or get past them, improve, beat them, and so on and so forth. That's that's not only the instinct part and the, and the science part, but it's it's the you know, the kind of the diligence, the due diligence part as well of coaching. That's what makes coaching so much fun, okay? But here are five workouts, okay, that I've used on a lot of people, okay? Um, I'm going to go over them, then I'm going to take you over to the whiteboard right here where I have everything laid out, okay, so you can see it there. So the first one is two sets of broken mile. The broken mile is 400, 600, 400, 200, okay? And just as an example, I'm going to use six minutes, 530, and five minutes as my kind of examples for a mile, and um, just because they're easily calculatable numbers of 90 seconds and, and 82 seconds and 75 seconds per 400. Um, and just to kind of make it easy to understand, okay? So it's two sets of broken mile, 400, 600, 400, 200, okay? You take a two minute, a two, uh, 200 meter jog recovery in between the reps. And then after the, the last 200, you take an 800 meter recovery. Jog, nice easy jog, get fluids if you need to, and then you do the second set. So it's two miles of total running, okay? Um, the first is essential. Let's just say the first is at your current race pace. The second one, you're working towards your goal race pace, if you, if, especially if you repeat this workout. But let's just say, you know, if, it, whether the current or the goal is is six minutes, so you're running the, the, the 400s and 90, 600s and 215, 
the 400s and 90 and the 200s and 45. I'm looking at the book here, my training book, okay? Um, so it's kind of an evenly paced workout, but it's a good way of breaking down a mile, okay? The 530 runners, 82 seconds for the 400, about 203 for the 600, 82 again for the 400, and 41 for the 200. And for the five minute milers, 75 for the 400, 152 for the 600, um, 75 for the 400, and 37 seconds or so for the 200. Okay, it's a way of breaking it down for the mile. Okay, and again, you take a 200 meter jog, and then after each rep, and um, you know, recovering in between a four and a six is different than recovering between the six and the four. So it's, 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 this is a good way of kind of getting used to the recovery and simulating a race scenario. Um, and, uh, and then an 800 meter in between set. So that's the first one. The second workout is 800, 600, 400, 300, okay? Um, three minute recovery. And what you do is, and I have it laid out here as well. The 800's at your current race pace for your mile, okay? The 600's essentially will generally be at your goal race pace for a mile. Uh, the 400 will be at your current race pace for 800, and the 300 will be at your goal race pace for 800, okay? Whatever that is. And then you take a three minute recovery after each rep. And then you do six by 150 meter efforts for turnover with a jog equal or 150 jog, 150 meter jog recovery on the back end. And that's generally between 800 and 400 meter pace. So that's kind of really turnover work. And again, not every workout needs to be long. There will be days where you're doing six times a thousand at 5K or, or at 5K pace or six times an 800 at 3K pace and other workouts as well. But these are more race specific workouts that complement the other things like the long runs and the threshold runs and the tempo runs and, and all this stuff. So these are these are really good race simulating workouts. So again, 800, 600, 400, 300, not a boatload of running. It's only about 2,100 meters of running, okay? Then you have your 6 by 150, but each, and also each rep gets progressively faster. So um, that's workout number two. Workout number three is two sets of 2 by 600 or 4 by 600, okay, at goal race pace. Okay, um, you're running two minutes in between the two reps of the set and then six minutes in between the set or two minutes after the first one, six minutes after the second one, two minutes after the third one, and then you run your fourth rep. So if you can get used to 600 meter efforts at mile pace, that's a really, really good workout. And this is a workout that you can repeat. You can do the, uh, the first workout at current mile pace, okay, and then you can do uh, you know the first set at current and the second set at goal if you want the next workout. And then the, set, and the third time you do the workout, all in a goal pace. It depends on how you, you're progressing, how your athletes are progressing, what you feel is most appropriate. But four times the 600 meters at mile pace, that's good. So let's just say for your six-minute milers, you're running 215s. For the 600s, for your 230 miles, you're running about 203s. And for your five-minute milers, you're running uh, 151, 152 for the, for the 600 meter reps. And then average it out. Add them all together, average them, divide them by four, and average it out. See where your average is and see how close you are towards being where your goal is. Okay. Um, number four, you run a 1,200-meter effort at mile pace. You take a six- to eight-minute active recovery, and then on the back end, you either do four times 400 okay, with a one-minute recovery or five times 300 with a 100-meter jog recovery at goal pace, slightly faster. So for your six-minute milers, you're looking at 430. For the 1200, for your 530 milers, looking at about 407. For your five-minute milers, looking at about 345s for the 1200s. But then the, you know the 400s are going to be slightly faster, so there'll be 88s instead of 90s for the six-minute milers, and 80s or 79s instead of 82s for the 530 milers, and 72, 73s for your five-minute milers instead of 75s. Okay, that's workout number four. And workout number five is two sets of 500, 800, 300, okay? Add it up together, it's a mile, or 1,600 meters. 500, 813 plus 3, 1,600 meters. You take a minute, you take two minutes in between the 500 and 800, and then a minute in between the 800 and the 300, okay? And then six minutes after the 300, or six minutes in between the sets, okay? Um, the goal is to run the 500 at current mile pace, the 800 at goal mile pace, and then the 300 faster, maybe current 800 meter pace, or again, goal mile pace, depending on how fit you are or how fit your athletes are. The, the idea behind this, is to, I've seen a lot of mile races where 
people kind of hold steady and then they'll just settle into a slower pace and wait for a kick. And that doesn't always suit, you know, that suits the kickers more than it does some of the strength oriented runners, your 5K, 10K folks. This is a different, you know, this is a way of simulating a workout so that you can press the middle of that race and kind of maybe even create a gap where, <coughs> excuse me, where the competitors think you're going to come back. And guess what? You don't come back. Okay. That's the point of creating a gap when people least expect it. You know, it's the same thing as, you know, in a mile race kicking from 600 meters out or from 550 meters out or 450 meters out. It throws people off. It's, it's doing things that people don't expect. But this is also a great way of, instead of, instead of going longer to shorter all the time, this time you're getting short, long, short. You, you're kind of creating a different workout. And again, putting you in a position to attack the middle of a broken mile instead of <clears throat> the beginning of it. Okay? Um, so again... Those 500s is um, your current race pace, the 800s at goal race pace, and then the 300s at either goal mile pace or current 800 meter pace, or in between the two. You take two minutes after the 500, a minute after the 800, and the minute rest puts you, you know, means you're coming back quickly to turn over on that 300, which simulates kicking at the end of a race when the legs, your legs are burning and you feel like you don't have it. That's the whole point with the short recovery, is to make sure you can turn over when you're already fatigued. And then the six minute break, and then repeating it again. If you can do two sets of that, or get to the, you can do two sets at the goal paces, then you're in pretty good shape. So now let me take you over here just so you can see what it looks like, because I have them all laid out for you. Okay. And I have it, and just like I said, okay. <clears throat> so the first one, I got two sets of four, six, four, two. Okay. 200 meter jog in between the rep, 800 meters in between the set. Okay, first set at current race pace, second set at goal race pace, or however you feel is most appropriate. Second one, eight, six, four, three. Okay, with a three minute recovery. 800 at current uh, mile race pace, 600 at uh, goal mile race pace, uh, 400 at current 800 meter pace, or approaching it, um, and then your 300 at goal 800 meter pace, if possible. Okay. And then on the back end, you take six by 150 meter efforts with a jog equal or 150 meter jog recovery at about 800 pace or slightly faster, even approaching 400 meter pace. That's simulating really, really um, fast turnover. And you know the milers, the real milers, have a lot of leg speed, a lot of turnover. That's the point of this workout. It's a race specific workout. Okay. Again, you're building up a foundation and doing a lot of other training before you get to these workouts, but these are uh, really, really, really good race readying workouts. Okay. Number three, the two sets of two by 600, two minutes in between the rep, six minutes in between the set. That's your goal mile pace. Okay. Number four, 1,200 meters at current mile pace, uh, six to eight minutes of active recovery, and then either four by 400 with a minute recovery at your goal mile pace, or one to two seconds faster per 400, or five times a 300 with a 100 meter jog. It's going to be about a minute anyway at goal mile pace, or one to two seconds and faster again, per 400 average, okay? And the last one, two sets of 500, 800, 300, okay? Two minutes after the 500, a minute after the 800, six minutes in between the set. Current race pace for 1500, goal race pace for 1500 or a mile, um, and then goal race pace for 1500 or slightly faster, even approaching 800 meter pace if you can at 800 meter pace. <clears throat> So these are the five workouts. Let me know what you think. Give me your feedback. Put them in the comments down below. Take a look at the other workouts in the description too. Make sure you take a look at them. And if you're going to watch the other videos, watch them in their entirety because I explain everything like I do here from beginning to end. I want to make sure you have a full understanding. I don't, just, I don't want you to just put stuff and you know, pause it, write stuff down, and then miss all the details because then missing the details can come back and bite you in the butt later on. And I, I want you to know as much as possible so as a coach or an athlete, you're well positioned to make the best decisions possible, especially when you need it the most. So hope you enjoyed this. Please hit that subscribe button and a notification, especially if you're a coach or an athlete and you want to learn a lot about just different training programs and stuff like that. I have fully detailed programs from 800 all the way up to the marathon at a whole bunch of different levels. So take a look and let me know what you think. Okay. After this, my next, uh, my next video, I'm looking at my book here, is how to gradually incre and safely increase the, your long runs. Okay, and the video after that, I'm going to do 5K simulation workouts. Okay, so be on the lookout for those and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to watch them and the notification next to it. So with that, be safe and look out for each other and I'll see you next time.